here to start our Christmas dinner, which we'll be doing tomorrow. But obviously, we've got some, what's, it, what's that? Mise en place, yeah. <laughs> Mise en place. Mise en place. Can't say that Who's word. the assistant? You can tell already. So we're all right. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Thanks. 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 So obviously, we've got a bit of prep work the night before, as you all know, and it's mainly cooking the turkey. So I'm going to hand it over to Christopher with his turkey while I do a bit of prep of my veg. Right, getting ready for the gravy. Right, so first things first, we need to get the turkey weighed so we know how long to cook for. So glove up. It's about a 30 pound turkey, so that's about 14, 15 kilograms. Now, this is going to be dead simple. I'm going to get it on, make sure it's on kilograms. I'm going to weigh it now, and then tomorrow, when we've cooked it and rested it a bit, oh, we're going to weigh it after cooking. So we're on 14 kilograms. So what that actually means, if you're going to cook this in a standard gas oven, for the first four kilograms, you're looking at about 40 minutes cook time straight away. The additional 10 kilograms need to give 45 minutes per kilogram. So you can imagine having that in a gas oven. You've got one temperature, you've not got any moisture. So the outside of the turkey is going to be cooked. It's going to be incinerated really before the inside of the turkey is cooked to a nice temperature. So I need to take the elastic off. Make sure you get it all. Get it all. Don't want to be cooking any of that, chef. And second most importantly, if your butcher is good to you like he is to us, he'll have all your giblets in a bag, which is important to take out this time, isn't it, Well, Well, it, uh, okay, one incident, <laughs> one incident. So oh, we've got our giblets, we're going to use this for the gravy, so I'll give that to you, Will, ready for the tray. And now, I'm going to load my cooking tray for the turkey. I'm going to go on about there. Now, uh, the important thing is, with the turkey, I'm not having to put it in a tray, there's no foil involved, it goes straight on the cooking rack. And for our gravy, we're going to have a tray underneath with our mirepoix ready for our gravy and our giblets, collecting all the cooking juices that come off the turkey for the gravy. So, for turkey, we want to get it all dressed and get butter all into it. I've never done this on camera before, because <laughs> it's quite an interesting scenario. There. Want to get right into all the creases and the crevices so we get nice crispy skin. I think it would look better if we did this at the same time, Will. Well, I think you're doing a good job there, Chris. <laughs> you're getting right in there, all the creases, the crevices. Oh, Come man. on. Got them legs nice and buttered down. So we're using a whole block of butter, obviously, to try and keep this nice and base. Now, another thing that most chefs usually use whenever we're doing a Christmas dinner or at home is we usually cover the turkey in tinfoil. Like Chris said, it's a long cooking time, so you tinfoil it so it doesn't burn. We're going to put it in this rationale with no tin file. Yeah. So we're hoping that we're going to get a nice crispy skin on the outside and a nice juicy bird. Yeah, another thing that's important to mention is, talking from experience, cooking in old style kitchens before, you're running a full gas extraction system, you're running a gas cooker, you've got your night porter if you're working in a hotel, checking the turkey, basting the turkey, you've got to baste it regularly or use the moisture, literally this is going to be in the oven and I reckon in the next five minutes, you don't need to touch it, you just need to open the door in the morning and we're going to be good to go. So I'm going to season this up, quite liberally. Are you good to go? I'm good to go, I've got my neck, I've got my heart, liver, kidneys. Kidneys. See, now usually at home, once we've cooked all this, I usually give this to the dog. What do you, do you usually just chuck them out here? Uh, my missus is quite squeamish, so we're not actually allowed to oh, use the giblets in my house. No. No. Does make the best gravy. Yeah. But it's usually only like the heart, obviously, you can't give the neck to the dog. I'm just going to give my hands a quick wash. Give them a good wash. So. Then is that going on top of the... If you, if you could get the roasting tray under the rack for the, the turkey. Tray. So I'm going to put this underneath. They catch all our nice turkey juices. 
So then we have a nice gravy base up there. Once Chris has finished washing his hands. <laughs> That's right, I'm going to do the awkward bit now, guys. But you're all right. Uh, we'll get the strong man lifted in. As long as we all know our place. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, Chris. Then we're okay, all right. Okay, okay. Now, usually, when you're in a restaurant, I, I've cooked for about five, 500 for a Christmas, well, not a Christmas dinner, but a roast dinner before. So you usually fill that all the way to the top. Have you usually, have you ever done that? I've, I've done big, big functions before. And generally, because cooking turkey this size mm -hmm. is such a pain, it's really hard to do, it's really hard to get right for customers when you've mm -hmm. got that much, you want everything to be spot on. Generally, what I've seen happen is you'll pre-cook the turkey, carve it, roll it up with your stuffing in parcels because mm -hmm. you're kind of forced to because that's the only way you can get a good product. But if you have a rationale like this, chefs finish up service, prep the turkey, takes five minutes and you put it in the oven. Tomorrow we're going to be resting it up only because we've got one cabinet. Really, you can go straight from the cabinet to carve. You don't need to rest it because it's held the, held the turkey at the, the correct temperature. It's ready to carve. Well, let's get this bird in. All right, let's go. You're all right there. I'm trying to be. We're good. We're it's, good. It's big. We are almost good to go. Oh, so when I overhang him. So this was what was it? 14 kilograms, about 31 and a half pounds bird. 14 kilograms, yeah, 30 pounds from a local butcher. That's good to go. And now I take my temperature probe. This is an important bit. Are you getting any? I'm on his side, Chris. Now, we want to get a good temperature reading, so we want to go on to the thickest part of the meat. This is the thickest parts in the breast. There's six sensors on this probe from the tip all the way down the shaft. So we're going to go straight into the thick bit and try and get a feel and feel it up the breast. And we're sitting nice in the middle of the thickest part of the meat so we can get an ac accurate reading for the temperature. Now, literally, that's all the hard work done. So we're going to close the door, hit the turkey symbol on the rationale, overnight roasting. These two gold settings, this is rationale's pre-settings, this is rationale recommendations. Now, you could go a bit lower if you wanted to, but rationale recommend you start cooking on 72. Let's get back to that. And this is your searing setting, but we're going to stick with Rationale's recommended settings. So roast at 170, sear at 170, cool the cabinet, mature, mature, and then it'll hold our temperature until we come back in the morning. Now, usually, normal chefs don't usually cook to 72, but because we're doing this long cooking process, it's, what was, what was the word used? Past we're looking at pasteurization. Pasteurization. So, there we go, so we've just activated it. And now if we look at the cycles, that's the first cycle. So it's going to roast the bird, mm -hmm. sear the bird, sear the meat, cool the carbonate, and then mature the bird all the way through. Tomorrow when we go live, half past ten, we're going to take that out and it's going to be perfect. No hassle, no waste, no mess. Rock and roll. Well, I think that's... I think we're just about managed. We're just in so I think we're okay. Well, we're glad that the bird fit in the oven because that was quite a big turkey. Um, so we will see you all tomorrow at half ten. We will be kicking off our live stream. So half ten o'clock tomorrow, we will be pulling this bird out. And attempting I'll... to cook Christmas dinner together, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. How many people are we cooking for? I don't know, about two, I think. Two people. Me and you. Me and you. Yeah, chefs are like, oh. I've got an office of about 40, 50 people to so feed. So you're taking the left side of the turkey, I'm taking the right. Yeah, I think so, mate. Yeah, I think it's so. not enough, is it? We need to put another bird in. We'll be all right. Okay. We'll be all right. <laughs> right, we'll catch you all tomorrow. See you all tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye now.